A weather forecast, by definition, is trying to predict the weather. You know the very same weather that everyone, for good reason, says is unpredictable. In other words, you can't count 100% on weather forecasts. You have to check the sky before you commit to flying a powered parachute in it. And that is especially true of winds. On this episode of the Powered Parachute Show, we talk about judging winds once you get to the airport. And we're going to do that right now. While I was working on my latest video, my top 10 list for determining weather conditions, I felt like I wasn't giving winds enough attention, at least relative to how important they are. So I thought I would make this video to talk about how to look at the environment around you before you commit to the sky. And as we get rolling here, please take a moment to subscribe if you want to see more aviation content like this. Your subscription to the channel and your likes for the videos are highly motion motivational to me. Thanks so much. Going into this, one of the first things to remember is that winds are almost always more brisk the higher up you go. In fact, if the winds are particularly light on the ground, they can double pretty quickly at just 100 feet up. So you don't just want to focus on what you feel on the surface. It pays to look up at flagpoles, treetops, smokestacks, and even clouds. That's where the real winds are moving. It really is a good idea to begin with wind forecasts too. Forecasts can help predict surface winds and with figuring out if winds are going to be a little spicier at altitude. A lot of people use RyanCarlton.com as their favorite wind forecast tool, which does a decent job of showing forecasts at winds at the altitudes we're most interested in, from the surface on up in smaller increments. For example, the standard winds aloft forecast starts at 3,000 feet above mean sea level. But in contrast, I just took a look at RyanCarlton.com and its listing for the winds aloft at my local airport start at an altitude of only 92 feet above ground level. Next predictions are at 256 feet and then 407 feet. That's pretty granular. It also helps to look at the wind directions being forecast, especially if you roll out to the field in the morning and the winds are calm. By the time you get your engine warmed up and the parachute out, the winds may just start blowing. Even a light wind blowing in the wrong direction can make launching more complicated. Paying attention to the forecast and setting up your powered parachute at the right end of your field can help prevent that problem from happening to you. A reason to pay attention to environmental factors is that typical wind meters at airports underreport lower wind speeds. I have a theory as to why that may be the case. If my theory is wrong, let me know in the comments. The theory is along the line of how durable wind meters, officially called anemometers, need to be in order to operate 24-7 and also be able to measure some really fast winds. An anemometer sensitive enough to measure winds accurately on the light side would probably not last too long before wearing out or breaking in higher winds. So wind speeds reported below 5 knots can't really be trusted that much. That leaves us with two options. One is to buy sensitive but expensive wind meters and just use them when we're trying to make go-no-go -go decisions about wind. The other option is to look at environmental factors. Now back in the day there were no fancy wind meters or the batteries to power them. All people had were environmental factors to work with. And until 1805 there wasn't much of a standard way to even describe different speeds of wind. But then along came Sir Francis Beaufort who was a Royal Navy officer serving on the HMS Woolwich he set up the Beaufort scale, which highly coincidentally matched his own name. His initial scale didn't have numbers assigned, so it truly was as undigital as you can get. Instead, the scale just described how the winds would affect a sailing ship. It started at calm and worked its way through light air, which was defined as just sufficient to give steerage way, and then worked its way to hurricane or that which no canvas could withstand. Now, the Beaufort scale has numbers as well as versions for both sea and land. And if you use the Beaufort scale and compare it to the numbers you get from most airport weather stations, you will see that the weather stations do systematically underreport wind. Let's go through the Beaufort scale so you can see what I mean. Beaufort zero is calm. Smoke rises vertically. If you pick up a little bit of dry grass clippings and drop them, they drop straight to the ground. If you light a normal butane cigarette lighter, the flame goes straight up. Beaufort 1 is called light air. That's from 1 to 3 miles per hour. The direction of the wind shown by smoke drift, but not by wind vanes or wind socks. Beaufort 2 is called a light breeze. That's from 4 to 7 miles per hour. That is when the wind can be felt on your face, leaves rustle, ordinary wind vanes are now moved by the wind. Keep in mind now that Beaufort scales of 0 through 2 are when we normally want to fly. 
However, most of us have flown in higher winds. Bring on Beaufort Force 3 wind. That's called a gentle breeze moving 8 to 12 miles per hour. For Beaufort 3, you will see leaves and small twigs in constant motion and the wind will extend light flags. Beaufort 4 is a so-called moderate breeze of 11 to 16 miles per hour. Wind will start doing things like raising dust and loose paper and small branches will begin to move. Beaufort 5 is referred to as a fresh breeze, which is a wind moving 19 to 24 miles per hour. At that point, small leaves and trees start to sway and there are crested wavelets on lakes. If you're in the air in this kind of wind, you are probably considering landing and how you are going to ground your parachute after you land without having it drag you into the next county. Beaufort 6 is a 25 to 31 mile per hour wind called a strong breeze. And strong it is. With Beaufort 6, large branches are in motion, there's whistling and telegraph wires, and good luck using an umbrella. Beaufort 7 has three names and none of them are good. This 32 to 38 mile per hour wind is known as a high wind or a moderate gale or a near gale. With it, whole trees are in motion and it's inconvenient to walk against the wind. Airliners can still take off and land with this much of a crosswind component, but I wouldn't even want to tow an enclosed powered parachute trailer down the road. Beaufort 8 has a couple of names of its own. It's considered either a gale or a fresh gale. You are talking about a 39 to 46 mile per hour wind with this one. Twigs are breaking from trees and it's difficult to walk. Beaufort Force 9 winds are the first level of winds that are officially considered damaging winds. And I guess so since they are moving at 47 to 54 miles per hour, these winds are considered full-on gales. They're called either strong gales or severe gales depending upon who's presenting on the weather channel. Slight structural damage occurs. Beaufort Force 10 winds are known as strong winds or whole gale winds. They're actually rarely experienced inland. They are clocking speeds of 55 to 63 miles per hour. You aren't standing around outside considering flight. If you are outside at all, you are trying to make it inside. Serious stuff starts happening. Trees get uprooted, considerable structure damage occurs, and utility trucks start traveling to your part of the world to restore electric power. Beaufort 11 winds are very rarely experienced inland. They are simply known as violent storm winds. Winds are moving at 64 to 72 miles per hour and widespread damage is pretty much guaranteed. Beaufort 12 winds are clocking over 73 miles per hour and are known as hurricane force winds. These are the winds that weather casters dream about reporting on. They will cause widespread damage. And we're gonna stop here. There are actually more levels of wind, but uh, Beaufort 13 through 17, but you know, those winds are cyclones and they're only used you know, in Taiwan and mainland China. Anyway, that's a lot of wind. I'll leave the links in the comments if you want to explore it more. Finally, if you are interested in powered parachute flight instruction in either the Midwest or in Florida, please visit the link to easyflight.com in the comments. And please remember again to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and blue windless skies.